As far as grant writing and getting grants is concerned, I think I cut my teeth very early with, uh, even during my PhD training, in terms of thinking about what resources do I need in order to conduct deep data development. A lot of the data that I collect for the studies that I do are not canned data sets that I can just simply get that are publicly available. They were data that I had to create. And so resources became a very big issue even as a PhD student. And what I was fortunate enough to do is start applying for small grants, even within the institution, right off the bat. And so I became very used to writing these grants for smaller institutional grants, inter-university research grants that you would get, for summer grants once I became a professor. And one of the early routines that I learned is that I was never going to write a grant for research that I wasn't gonna do anyway. So the question is not, you know, if I get the money, then I will do it. It's really a question of bricolage. How am I going to assemble the resources that I need to do in order to do the work that I'm gonna do, regardless of how I get the money? The second thing is that also enabled me to actually use these grant applications as ways to further my research agenda. So, uh, you know, it was not work that was gonna be wasted, that if the application didn't come through, then I was not gonna be able to write a research project, you know, paper out of it. Uh, because many of the things that we need is actually in terms of data purchase, yes, but those are largely modest. They come largely in the, uh, in the context of PhD student, undergraduate, RA time, my own time that I can dedicate and put aside for it. That's what social sciences research is really about. Uh, it's not about buying big equipment and big computers and so on. Uh, so it was easy for me to think through the grant application process and just embed it within the research enterprise itself. And then I started to become a little bit more ambitious. Of course, the first several times that I applied for an NSF grant as an assistant professor, I had 0% success. In fact, uh, I tried, tried, tried again. And my first NSF um, uh, grant did not come for a good 15 years since my first application. So story number one is there is a very small uh, chance of success, but that doesn't mean that if you don't apply, there's a 0% chance of success, right? Uh, but if you reduce the cost of grant application anyway, then uh, it works out. Now for public foundation grants, such as NSF, um, one, of the, one of the suggestions I would have for scholars that are thinking about it is that the grant is being reviewed by a panel of scholars. And what they want to do is see signals of whether you can credibly commit or complete the goals of the research that you're doing. So having, paradoxically, this means that you apply for the grant halfway through the research project as opposed to the front end of the research project. So you can at least show some preliminary results and increase your credibility. And one of the things that of course I've done because all of my research projects tend to be connected to the earlier path dependent uh, uh, research questions that I'm interested in is I often leverage the, the foundation grant for completing the other half of this project and then seeding the second application that I would be getting at. So that's a strategy that has worked for me as far as public foundations are concerned. Now I make this distinction because applying for an NSF foundation is a very different uh, process than applying for say a Kaufman Foundation uh, process or a Rockefeller Foundation one. At least when I received my first grants from uh, Kaufman Foundation, I'm grateful for immensely because they helped define not only my own research agenda, but also my students and my junior colleagues. They had a process where they were betting on the scholar and not necessarily on the idea. So in NSF, in fact, it's double-blinded review. They, uh, you know, they don't, as far as possible, they want to focus on the content of the particular proposal rather than the people that are doing it. Kaufman and the private foundations tend to say, we don't know about whether or not uh, this idea will come to fruition or not, but we want to bet on the person. 
So with Kaufman Foundation, with Rockefeller Foundation, it was very important for me to establish right up front the trust and the credibility that in fact I am going to be able to deliver on high quality research.